Yesterday, my cousin posted this uh, article to Facebook, and uh, I wanted to make a few comments about it. It's a interesting article. I'll link it in the under uh, description. Uh, you can check it out uh, after the video, or you can pause now and read it before you continue. Uh, if you want to do that, I'll give a beat. Um, the idea of the article is that uh, Christmas is not a myth. The the uh, because um, there are uh, definitions to words, then and Christmas doesn't fit that definition. Uh, according to this article, um, it, even if it turns out that it's untrue that Jesus was born of a virgin, that doesn't make it a myth because it wasn't written. Uh, as an allegorical story. It was written as a factual story. So um, uh, since it wasn't written as allegory, that makes it not a myth. Um, I disagree with that definition. Uh, a, a, if, uh, if that's not a myth, then none of the stories of God's ever told were myths. And we all consider uh, the stories of Zeus and Poseidon and um, Odin, they're myths. That's what they're called. They're called myths. They are myths. And um, just because and Paul Bunyan's also a myth, but that doesn't mean, and it was never written as a, a true event, but, uh, and Santa Claus is a myth, but that doesn't mean that um, uh, a story has to have been written as allegory in order to be considered a myth. Um, and uh, uh, the, article, the article also goes on to say that um, uh, a, 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 an honest appraisal of the story of the virgin birth um, would have to start with uh, a person assuming that everything in the story is true and moving forward from there. So, for example, you would have to assume that there is such a thing possible as a virgin birth and that there is such a thing possible as a god and then go into it and examine the story for historicity. And if the historicity proves wanting, then um, you can call it a non-historical story, but you still can't call it a myth according to this uh, article. Um, uh, what he bas and then he basically sets up a, uh, a scenario where a person is trying to um, uh, examine the historical uh, side of the, of the virgin birth story and uh, comes, at, comes at it from uh, a position of not believing in the virgin birth uh, to begin with. And so he, he's calling that uh, ac like academically uh, fraudulent uh, if you do that. So what I want to do is I want to uh, posit a scenario. Uh, so, uh, would this writer, do you think, would this writer be willing to examine the story of Leda and the Swan in the same way? And I'm picking the story of Leda and the Swan because it's a story about God coming to a, a woman and impregnating her with his seed. And it was considered to be um, historically true uh, to the people of the time that the story was told, and we now consider that story to be a myth. So should we uh, examine that story from the, with the same um, uh, attitude? Should we, should we believe, uh, going into it, that it's possible that uh, Zeus turned himself into a swan, came to Leda, uh, impregnated her, and, uh, and uh, uh, after that, Castor and Pollux were born, and that uh, uh, Pollux was a uh, immortal and Castor was not, and that uh, in the end, um, after Castor died, uh, Zeus took pity on Pollux and placed them in the heavens as the uh, constellation Gemini, and then move on with the history from there. Should we do that? Would anybody do that? Does it make sense to do that? Of course not. So why should we take the idea that there was a virgin birth in Bethlehem to be valid as well. And if we are going to examine that, okay, one thing that the uh, examiner might say is, well, in the story of Castor and Pollux, there are various accounts. In some of the cases, they were born of an, uh, from eggs. In other cases, they were not born from eggs. So, you know, there are these various accounts. Well, let me tell you, the Bible uh, in Matthew and Luke have contradictory versions of the birth of Jesus. So um, since there's no historical agreement as to that story, then the fact that there's no historical agreement as to the story of Castor and Pollux shouldn't matter either, should it? So uh, my basic, my, my point is, we can say that the virgin birth story is a myth and move on from there. Whether that means that there was or was not a historical Jesus, that's another story. But the virgin birth story, the Christmas story, is 
a myth by definition, whether the writer of this article wants to ex ex accept that as, or, as true or not, doesn't really matter. Um, we all know that um, uh, virgins, uh, human virgins don't um, uh, spontaneously become pregnant. And gods um, without penises don't inseminate women. It's just not how it works. And there, uh, so um, knowing that there are certain things that we can take from scientific knowledge and begin with them and examine the story from that point. Scientifically, we know that the virgin birth story is not possible. Not that it's not likely, it's not possible. Discounting miracles, because if we're gonna allow for miracles and we can allow for Zeus turning into a swan and impregnating Leda, and we're not going to do that, are we? So, yeah, that's, that's my point. Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, Happy New Year. Bye.